Okay, in this homework assignment, we're going to talk about how to convert from Ka to Kb. I told you this is going to be important because most of the time you're going to be given the molecular species, and if you have a salt of some sort, you're going to need the Ka or Kb of that ion. So to calculate the pH of a salt solution, we require the Ka of the acidic cation or the Kb of the basic anion. The ionization constants of ions are not listed directly in tables because their values or easily related to the conjugate species. Okay, we've got the molecular species. We can determine the, the Ka or Kb of the ion directly from that. Thus, the Kb of Cn minus is related to the Ka of all 8 Cn. If I know the hydrogen cyanide Ka, concentra uh, Ka value, I can get to the Kb of that cyanide ion okay, from that acid-base conjugate pair. Most of your tables, excuse me, all your tables are basically written as molecular species. So anytime I'm dealing with an ion, I'm going to have to calculate the Ka to be able to work my problem. To see the relationship between Ka and Kb for the conjugate acid base pairs, we're going to consider the hydrogen cyanide acid in the base ionization of the cyanide ion to, to show you this uh, expression. I got hydrogen cyanide plus water gives me hydronium ion and cyanide ion. Okay, basically it's an acid base. I got my acid hydrogen cyanide donating the proton. Okay, donating that proton over to the water forming hydronium ion CM ion. So basically we got an acid hydrolysis or so have a Ka. Well, this CN minus now can undergo some base hydrolysis, okay, because it can accept a proton. So now we can write that base hydrolysis. It's going to be CN minus plus water. Well, the water is going to donate the proton to the CN minus, which gives me HCN plus OH minus. Since this is a base hydrolysis, it's a KB. Now, you should be able to write these at reactions by your own, by, your own, by using the bronsted lorry concept. Acid donate proton, base accepts a proton. Now, if we go ahead and take this, these two reactions, okay, if we take these two reactions and add them up, what's going to happen? Well, first off, you're going to notice that 8CN is on both sides. So what happens there? They cancel out. You also will notice that CN minus is on both sides. So that cancels out. If I add the two equations together, what do we get? Water plus water gives me hydronium ion plus hydroxide ion. Does that equation look familiar? Do you recognize that equation? Hopefully you say yes, okay? And what is that equation of? What is the relationship between water plus water give me hydronium ion and hydroxide ion? That is relationship through what K? KW. And what do we do when we add two reactions together and we get a, a reaction and we get a K value? What do we do with the K values to solve for that overall K? That's correct. We multiply them. Okay, so in this case, we're saying that Kw is equal to Ka times Kb. That goes back to a previous assignment. When we add equilibrium expressions, we multiply the Ks to get the overall K. So we're saying since we got Ka, Kb, and they're related through that Kw, that basically if we want to determine the Ka or something or Kb or something, we can use the conjugate acid or base and through Kw solve for that value. So therefore, Ka times Kb equal to Kw and for our purposes, Kw is going to be equal to 1.00 times 10 to the negative 14th because everything that we're going to do is going to be at 25 degrees C. If we change the temperature though, you get a different K, different calculation, but everything we're going to do is going to be at 25 degrees C. So how would we would use this? Let's say, for instance, I want to calculate the Ka of ammonia ion given the Kb of ammonia is 1.8 times 10 to negative fifth at 25 degrees C. What we're saying is, let's say I had some ammonia chloride and I was trying to find the pH of something. Okay, trying to find the pH of that ammonia chloride. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is, typically, if you're going to work on that, you would take your ammonia chloride, and you always take that soluble salt and break it up first, so you would get your ammonia ions plus your chloride ions, and we're saying the chloride is neutral, don't have to worry about it, but then i got to worry about that ammonia. 
So you get your ammonia ion plus your water. We'll give you ammonia plus hydronium ion. So Okay, so you're set up, you know it's an acid, so it would be a Ka is equal to my ammonia concentration times my hydronium ion concentration divided by my ammonia ion concentration. Okay, but in the problem, we were given the Kb of ammonia, and I need the Ka. So you set up your problem and start doing your calculation. You're going to see, I have to change the Ka. And this is where this concept is going to come in handy because I can't use the Kb just because it's given to me. I'm going to have to convert that to Ka. Okay, I need the Ka of ammonia ion, not the Kb of ammonia. So then I would have to do my calculation, which in this case would be Ka is equal to Ka is equal to Kw over Kb. That's just rearranging it, multiply, uh, dividing through by Kb, which is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5th, which is equal to 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. So it's this value of Ka is what I'm going to use in my calculation. So at that point, I would solve for my x and then solve for my pH, etc. Homework 34 deals with going from Ka to Kb and vice versa. Important concept when you're dealing with salts, and you're going to run into salts, especially when we start doing the uh, neutralization reactions, and you got to know how to get from K to KB. This is where a careless mistake happens, and a lot of errors happen here. You're given KA, and you need KB, you need to switch it. You can't just use KA because it's given to you. Okay, this is where a careless error tends to occur. Okay, got to use the right K for the right situation.